This video is a review of the electrochemistry chapter in chemical thermodynamics. So we start by defining the setup of an electrochemical cell. We have an anode where an oxidation reaction occurs. We have a cathode where a reduction reaction occurs. And we note the acronym oil rig. Oxidation is a loss of electrons and reduction is gain of electrons. So we have at the anode here an oxidation where some metal in this anode is oxidized into solution, loses some electrons. Those electrons flow through this wire to the cathode, and then those electrons reduce some metal in the solution, deposit it on the cathode, and then some ions flow through the salt bridge to complete the circuit, and we can have energy and electrons and everything flow through this circuit as long as our anode and cathode will function. We can break down this electrochemical reaction into two half-cell reactions, one that occurs at the cathode, one that occurs at the anode. An, an example of the cathode would be the reduction of nickel 2 plus ions to nickel metal. An example of oxidation occurring in an anode would be the oxidation of tin metal to form tin ions and electrons. We can build this electrochemical cell into a cell diagram, which is a shorthand representation of it. So we have something like tin metal at our anode being oxidized to uh, tin sulfate in the aqueous solution. Two double bar in the middle representing our salt bridge. And then our cathode on the right where nickel sulfate ions are reduced in order to form nickel metal. Then we can define the electromotive force, the EMF, and the, the Nernst equation. We have the change of potential, the change in voltage between sides here is the voltage of the right side minus the voltage of the left side. And then the EMF is the change in voltage evaluated when there is almost no current in the, in the system and where it's also a reversible situation. Then we have the Gibbs energy of reaction for this cell is equal to minus number of moles of electrons transferred times Faraday's constant times the EMF of the cell. And the EMF of the cell is equal to the standard EMF minus RT over NF times the natural log of the reaction quotient. And the standard EMF of the cell is just equal to RT over number of moles of electrons transferred times Faraday's constant times natural log of the equilibrium constant. We can calculate what the, the E0 cell, what the standard uh, EMF of the cell is from standard reduction potentials, which we get from a table. The standard EMF of the cell is equal to the standard reduction potential on the right plus the standard oxidation potential on the left. But the standard oxidation potential on the left is just equal to the negative of its standard reduction potential. So we have the standard reduction potential at the cathode minus the standard reduction potential at the anode gives us the standard EMF of the cell. And we can look up both of these values from a table depending on what the given half cell reaction at the cathode and anode are. We can also determine what the entropy and the enthalpy changes are during electrochemical reactions. The entropy comes from the number of moles transferred times Faraday's constant times the partial derivative of the EMF with respect to temperature at constant pressure. So from this, we know that the enthalpy of reaction is just the Gibbs energy, uh, the Gibbs energy plus temperature times entropy change. So we have the enthalpy change is number of moles transferred of electrons times Faraday's constant times temperature times partial derivative of EMF with respect to temperature minus the EMF of the cell. We can also define in electrochemistry the uh, standard enthalpy of formation of various ions. This comes from defining the standard enthalpy of formation of an aqueous hydronium or an aqueous hydrogen ion to be zero. So by defining the standard state of an aqueous hydrogen ion to be zero, we can use this to make a lot of other measurements and find out what the Gibbs energy of formation is for any other type of ion since it can be measured 
uh, with respect to this standard value for hydrogen. Solubility product is an equilibrium constant for a certain type of ionic dissolution into aqueous solution. So if we have some type of sparingly soluble salt, then it can dissolve into aqueous solution with this type of reaction here. And since it's solid, on the only reactant is a solid, its activity is constant. So we have Ksp, the equilibrium constant or solubility product, is equal to the metal ion to the power of its stoichiometric coefficient times the anion to the power of its stoichiometric coefficient. And if you set up an electrochemical cell such that your net ionic reaction is this Ksp reaction, then your Ksp is equal to the exponential of Nf E0 cell divided by gas constant times temperature. And finally, we have batteries where a primary battery is a one-use battery, and it is an irreversible chemical reaction, often in which all of the participants in the reaction are going, to, are going to be solid or liquid, and thus it's going to output a constant voltage. And the examples of these include mercury uh, batteries and lithium batteries, lithium metal batteries. And alternatively, we have secondary batteries, which are multi-use, they're reversible, they're rechargeable, all of those types of desirable properties. Uh, those examples of reversible secondary batteries include lead-acid batteries, lithium-ion batteries, and nickel-cadmium batteries.